Hey, Zach here from Frontenac Outfitters Canoe and Kayak Center. Today, we're gonna to talk about sleeping bags and how to choose one that's gonna be right for you. Uh, sleeping is a, a huge component of camping and being comfortable while you sleep is, is you know, as I get older, really important to me. Um, having a, a warm, comfortable sleep gonna give me energy for the next day and just, you know, keep me from getting the miserables. So what are some things we should look for when we're looking for a sleeping bag, uh, whether it's a winter bag or maybe a bag for fall? Summer is pretty easy, um, especially, you know, in, in Ontario and uh, and kind of our, our region. You don't have to worry so much about these crazy fluxes in temperature down at night. Winter time and fall though, we need to kind of plan a little differently because things can get really cold at night uh, and there's nothing worse than trying to sleep through the night and being uncomfortable. So a couple things to consider would be the temperature rating of your bag the shape of your bag, size and fit, insulation type, and some of the features that you might find on different styles of sleeping bags. So first of all, temperature rating, uh, this is something you know that's used more as a guideline than I would say a hard and fast rule. Most manufacturers are gonna base their temperature rating assuming that you're going to be sleeping on a, a sleeping pad, ideally an insulated one, and we can get into to sleeping pads in a different video. But I would recommend buying an insulated pad if it's gonna be your only sleeping pad. Invest the money into a decent one that has some decent R value to it, at least three or above. It's gonna work well in the summertime, but it'll also work really well in the wintertime. It's also gonna assume that you're likely gonna be wearing long underwear, and I would again suggest you wear that for a couple different reasons, either long underwear or a, a bag line it's going to keep the bag cleaner um, which is going to you know add to the overall durability and you're gonna to have to wash it less um, but also it's going to add in a you know that extra bit of, of warmth and also help kind of control you know the moisture and sweat um, you know as gross as it sounds it's just a natural fact uh, that you know we, we're gonna sweat and perspire a little bit uh, even in the winter time and you know we want to avoid that bag getting damp so I find you know good long underwear will really help kind of manage that uh, that issue so other things to consider would be your bag shape um, you know the bigger the bag is the harder it's gonna be to warm up so for fall and winter camping you know I really wouldn't suggest uh, you know, kind of the rectangular or those barrel style of bags. They tend to be really bulky. They're less expensive, which is great, um, but you're gonna be colder. Um, they're gonna be harder to warm up. Overall, they generally pack up much more bulky than something like a, a mummy bag or a new spoon style shaped bag from, from Nemo. So here we've got, this is a pretty heavy duty winter bag from, uh, from Thermarest. This is the Polar Ranger. This is one of their, their warmest bags or coldest rating bags. This is a mummy shaped bag and there's a lot of features on this bag uh, that I really like and that I would look out for on other bags that I might be looking at. For winter camping and fall camping, a mummy bag is gonna keep you warmer. Now they are a little bit of a snugger fit. So if you find yourself, you roll around a lot, you really wanna make sure that you can ideally try that bag on uh, to see if you have you know room to move around in. If you're a side sleeper, uh, the Nemo bag, uh, this is the Sonic. Uh, and they do other spoon shaped style bags. The Sonic is a, is a mummy bag as well. And for most winter camping bags, you're gonna find that, that mummy shape is, is gonna be about the one you can find. But for fall camping, you know, in that, say that zero to minus nine-ish range, uh, the spoon, shot, spoon shaped bag works really, really well because you can roll around in that bag and it gives you a little bit more freedom of movement. But again, you kind of open up the expansion inside of there. So, you, you, you know, it's a little harder to warm up Whereas if you get a nice mummy bag, it's gonna fit really snug. The next thing we're gonna talk about is, uh, is the insulation of the bag itself. Uh, you know, what are they using as fill inside of it? Down is, you know, long been touted. It's kind of the, the best material and there's different qualities of down. Generally, the higher the number, the more expensive it's gonna be, but the better warmth it's gonna give you and the better packability it's gonna give you. So that bag will pack smaller and ideally, you know, keep you a bit warmer as well. 800 is about the, the highest quality you're gonna find, but you know, it definitely comes at a premium cost. When we're, you know, scouting out bags out, uh, you know, for, for winter use, always try to, to purchase a bag for the lowest temperature you're gonna be in, but you wanna ideally give yourselves a couple of degrees of, of variance, um, you know, so that you're gonna be more comfortable not running that bag down to the most extreme levels that it's, it's rated for. Not to say it's not gonna work, but it's, you know, it's gonna give you a more comfortable sleep. If I know it's gonna be minus 20 out, I'm probably gonna take this guy because I've got another 10 degrees of variance that I can, you know, kind of rely on to, to keep me warm if it does dip down closer to minus 30 or even below. A lot of new features popping up in new bags. Nemo, Thermarest, they've got kind of these either vented side 
holes. Uh, Nemo uses what's called their thermal gills, which are a couple of zippers to help, you know, control the, the heat in the bag. You find you're warming up, but you don't want to take yourself out of the bag. You can just unzip these little gills they have on it to, to open up a bit of breathability. This bag here from uh, Thermarest, really neat. It's got little armholes, so, you know, if you're just chilling out at camp, you can just pop your hands out there, drink, eat, whatever, and stay inside of your bag. Or, again, you can just kind of unzip these a little bit to let a bit of that warm air out if you find it's just a little bit too warm for you. Uh, other things that, you know, I definitely want to look at is a hood, especially for, for winter and fall camping. Uh, this is really going to help kind of trap in a lot of, of warmth. Uh, our head loses a lot of heat over overnight. I like to, if it's cold out, I'll generally wear a toque, but also have uh, have the the hood here um, done up and if it gets cold I can kind of cinch it down might be kind of hard to see on the video here but uh, we have a baffle here which goes around the neck again to kind of stop drafts from coming down through the body really really nice feature to have um, and you'll find this on most colder temperature mummy style bags another nice feature uh, that uh, Thermarest is putting on a lot of their sleeping bags uh, whether it's a summer or winter bag are these little straps they're removable so if you don't want to use them you don't have to but uh, this is designed basically to, to put your Thermarest in or your sleeping pad and secure it so that you know if you're moving around that that the, you're not going to roll off the sleeping pad which i think is a, a really good idea other bags will have maybe a sleeve you can slide it into definitely a feature i look out for um and uh, you know to see if your bag will accommodate that or not it is really really nice to have uh, down versus synthetic uh, you know we kind of touched on the value of down uh, synthetic has come a long way though it's it, it packs better it's warmer i don't know if it's still quite comparable to what down has to offer but there are some other advantages. It, it tends to repel moisture better, so if the bag does get wet or damp, uh, it'll hold its, its heat better. Now, that said, a lot of down these days is treated with a DWR, um, so that's gonna kinda you know, negate that point a little bit, that you know, the, the DWR treated down is gonna be warm because it's, it's not gonna absorb that moisture like it would uh, without that treatment. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is there's different sizes of bags, yeah, and we're all different heights, you know, if you're really tall, you might have a hard time finding a bag, but generally you'll find most manufacturers are building their bags in three sizes. Oftentimes it'll be unisex, but they'll also sometimes even have a men's version and a women's version just for our different styles of shapes. Men tend to be a little bigger in the shoulders. Women tend to be a bit bigger in the hips. So they'll, you know, kind of balance the installation and also the sizing of the bag accordingly to, to you know, how our bodies are cut. Again, not all manufacturers are, are made equal in the sense of how they're going to fit or how they're cut. Uh, so always a good idea if you have the opportunity to, to try the bag out before you actually take it into the wilderness and try it out for the first time. Uh, some other things to keep in mind is a lot of sleeping bags can actually zip together. This one here is not going to be because this one uses kind of a different system where it actually zips up the middle and I, I quite liked it. It, it. You know, it was you know, really easy to kind of get in and out of which, you know, I'm kind of instead of awkwardly trying to zip up that zipper down the side, especially with these arm sleeves here, it was really easy to kind of manage that. But if you're a couple out going out together, you can, if you, especially if you buy kind of the same brand and you know that those two can mate together, you can actually zip those sleeping bags together so you can have, you know, get that extra heat going together. So it might be a nice feature to look out for if you're shopping as a couple. Another thing to consider is your sleeping pad. Um, you know, they come in, again, a whole gamut of styles, uh, values. If you want more information about that, you can check out this other video here that we're going to do on sleeping pads. If you want to have a look at any winter sleeping bags or sleeping pads, uh, you can check out the links below. Uh, as always, you know, feel free to give us a call or send us an email for any more information. Thanks a lot for watching.